Evening all. At the end of a, a crisp, chilly day in Bristol, and I'm sure plenty of folk around here will have watched the score in West London with growing concern. London Irish beating Newcastle in Brentford to move off the bottom of the Premiership to plonk Bristol there instead. So work to do for the Bears, work to do. Pat Lamb knows that. Six losses on the trot, not part of the plan, and the man whose name stands out on this team sheet knows that as well. Ellis Gench about to play for his hometown club against the one where he became a bit of a legend, where six months ago he was winning the title. Semi Randrandra, another name that stands out. This will be his first game this season, first since April after a knee injury. Young Diego Bailey steps in for Luke Morahan on the right wing. And at scrum half, Will Porter, as he continues to settle in here after being directly affected by Wasp's demise. Right, Porter looks across to Leicester's bench. He'll see his old Wasp's mate, Charlie Atkinson, now earning a living in the East Midlands. Steve Borthwick, thrilled to be able to pick Dan Kelly again. Fully fit for the first time this season and stationed once more alongside Guy Porter in midfield. Stewart and Young's back from test detail. Watson replacing the now departed Namani Nandolo on the wing. And Oli Chesson back involved as a Leicester starter in the pack for the first time in a while. And with Jasper Visa starting again at number eight for the first time since the November tests. It's a set of forwards not that far off full strength. Yeah, it's a good pack of forwards, and there's plenty of matchups throughout the forwards, but there's one that stands out, doesn't it, right at the top of your screen. The battle of Genge against Cole, mate against mate. Potential for fireworks tonight, potential for penalties tonight, potential for cuddles tonight. Who knows? But it's going to be really interesting watching these two mates go head to head. And we know Leicester likes to kick the ball, but last weekend Bristol kicked more than they ever have for their average. So if that trend continues tonight, I expect Freddie Stewart and Charles Piatow to both have busy nights fielding the ball, but then, of course, on the character attack as well. It's a dry night, it is cold, but a great night for attacking running rugby. Evening, Topsy, how are you doing? Very good, thanks, very good. No, we're all wrapped up like sausage rolls here, aren't we? It, 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 it feels, it feels what chilly. What sausage rolls up well. for? <laughs> Just eat them. <laughs> It wasn't, a, it wasn't a particularly pretty win for Leicester against London Irish last Sunday. Uh, a bit of hanging on at the end, but it was a win, a 5.1, and and here we are inside the Bears' lair. Topsy, a word about Semi Randranja. We're getting very excited about his first game for an awfully long time, but as somebody who built his game on speed as well, how tough will it be to come back on a night like this and hit top gear straight away? It might take him a while, because he'll have been wanting this moment for so long, but you've been out for that long of time. You want a couple of early touches to settle the nerves, to know that the injuries are all OK, and then build your confidence through the game. What you probably don't want is, here, Semi, have the ball, try and run through three players. I think Bristol need to be careful with how they build him into the game. If they do that, he'll have a great night. Great to see him back as well. Dan Kelly, finally, 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 in December. First game of the season after injury, a lengthy hamstring injury. It's actually been his first run out since the Premiership semi-final against Northampton and, and Kelly and Porter such an important wheel in what Leicester are about last season. Yeah, absolutely. And, and Kelly really had nudged ahead in terms of international reckoning, hadn't he? And obviously Porter benefiting over the autumn with his, his caps, but I just think that Kelly adds a slightly different dynamic, a little bit more physical in his carries, despite being a smaller centre player. He's one of those pocket battleships really got Leicester over the game line when he carried last year and they missed him and uh, they'll hope that a little bit like Semi Randrandra he can get through those early stages of return from an injury fit and healthy and build back to the player he was very important cog for Leicester I think Ellis Gend is up for this <laughs> my, my goodness I mean the things he did in a Leicester shirt the growing he did Went to Leicester for a bit of headspace, I think, as, as much as anything. 111 games later, he returned to his hometown as a Premiership champion. He's not the captain. It's the smiling Stephen Luatua. It's the laughing Stephen Luatua. How good is that to see? Daddy Bear. Love it here, Tops. 
proper ground, isn't it? It is, and it's at night time as well, Friday night, Saturday night, the crowd comes. It's a big party, they just need the team to deliver as well to round off the whole weekend. And here comes Semi. Will he be semi-sonic or supersonic? Either way, it's going to be fun watching. Always fun watching him. Look who's back. Genj and Cole. You just have to snigger at the prospect. You may already have heard, by the way, but we're, we're going to have a moment's applause for Doddy Weir after five minutes this evening. Innovation on five for an inspirational five for Doddy. That to look forward to. Craig Maxwell Keys is our referee. Mike Hudson and Jamie Lee with the flags. Claire Hudnett. Nice and warm in our truck, the TMO. <laughs> Maxwell Keys, by the way, the youngest Premiership referee to reach 100 games last season. He's in charge. Leicester won the toss on the in the nice. red. They chose the kickoff. <laughs> Freddie Burns hoists it high over the head of Vui. But uh, Gabriel Ibertoy, Gabe Ibertoy was um, neatly positioned and importantly positioned from a Harlequin back in the Premiership with Bristol. Will Porter from a Wasp back in the Prem with Bristol. A big part of Leicester's game is the metres in contact, so you'll see Bristol, particularly early on, just trying to take that confidence of their carrying away. Just giving away a penalty, Youngs has gone. Yeah, taking the opportunity of not being able to be tackled by players within 10 metres. Well, he's made it up to the 10-metre line and whips it away to Cole. A little bit too much whip on it. Let it come! We're under a knock-on advantage only. Uh, bright start from Youngs, bursting down the side. Just a little bit of... Hesitation when they went to pick up the ball and play down that blind side. Ivatoya very quick up. Just putting pressure on Dan Cole and maybe thinking of his hands to Stewart, but it's the first scrum. Should we just be quiet and see what happens? Stability's yours. <laughs> yes, ladies and gentlemen. Ellis Genge meets Dan Cole. Crouch, bind, set. This is thanks to the line. Rock solid from Genj. Sheedy. Yep. It's Ashton, chased by Ibertoy. Just hold on, you all. Yep. Sheedy has to go a long way back. That ball might have um, been given too much of a wallop. It's a, it's a relatively shallow in goal area here, Topsy. It is, so you need to be very careful with the weight of your kick. You know, loads of space out back there, but if the ball bounces wrong for you, that's what can happen. I mean, it was very it was telegraphed from Bristol in terms of their back line very, very flat. They had no thoughts of looking to run it. They're just thinking early on, let's give us territory, give us field position. Lovely position to attack from now, and if they get the same scrum they just had, definitely expect them to run this one. Same work, lads. First one's really good. Introduce the other front rows, by the way. It's not just about uh, Genge and Cole. There's also Byrne and Lahey for Bristol and Whitcomb and Montosha for Leicester. Keep your eye on Ibatoya here. Everyone's eyes will be on Semi Randrandra, but he's just hovering in behind. Sheedy's just had a little whisper in his ear. Boy! bit of movement in the scrum, but um, it has settled down once the ball was in. Uh, Jake Heenan at eight controls it nicely, and it was taken up by Piers O'Connor. And, and Porter on his own little sniping run. Good signing, Will Porter for Bristol. Lua Tua, the captain. Sheedy, Ibertoy. Popping up on that right-hand side. Diego Bailey is the right winger a little bit further out. It's not, but thank you. Just will come back the other way. 
Chris Vui. Dan Cole making sure that he can't be picked out by Craig Maxwell Keys and Ibatoy over the top to Diego Bailey. Now then, Genge, first semi splintering run. Vui. O'Connor over the top to Heenan. Sam Lewis! Oh, still the threat, Randrandra! Oh, he's been away for ages. He's been away since April, and it's taken, what, four and a half minutes to get back into the Premiership. Try scoring groove. A brilliant start from Bristol, all to do with the speed of the ball from the breakdown. Leicester will go hard at them, despite not being a big turnover team this season, when they play against fast, expansive teams like Northampton and Harlequins and Bristol, they will go hard at the breakdown, but they couldn't. They couldn't get any control. Stuart Mill falls off one, Brandranda there, picks and goes, and then it looked like he might have been held up. Just wonder whether the retreating Stewart might have been judged offside had it not been scored. That's, uh, sorry, it's Ashton, isn't it, retreating? Try all good, Craig. But the referee, prime position, saw the ball go oh, down, didn't right. need the help of the TMO. It's annoying presenting the ball and not putting it inside. And five minutes gone to mark the occasion after a great man leaves us who wore the number five shirt with such pride and distinction. This for Doddy. For that, the ball into the arms of Vui. Played, yeah, yes, please. Take him back in. Porter oh, charged down. Chesham had his great big mitts on it. One hand, not two. Just a little bit fortunate there, Porter, that the ball didn't fly straight for Chesham because he carried on his run. Just skewed off to the side, allowed Porter to recover. Has to get this one right. Much longer Caterpillar to give him a little bit more room. Chesham's there again. Oh, he nearly gets to him. Freddie Stewart. To um, another Freddie Burns. And again, the bouncing ball on um, a fairly firm Ashton Gate surface. Not Leicester's friend. No, well, Freddie's got the angle wrong on that kick. You can see what he's doing. There is a lot of space on that far left-hand side, but then just doesn't quite strike all the way through it. Five metres inside his own half, just on the... the champion charge downs when you actually get a hand to it, but sometimes that oh, pressure puts a little bit of a rush on a kicker. We saw Otherwise, really good yeah. kick chase from Bristol, forces the error. Here we go, boys. Really good. Yes, Matt. Here we go. Let's go. Barry. It settled down eventually, but a bit quicker, yeah? One. Settled down, it took a long time. Uh, no rush, no ball. Uh. Perfect, sorry about that, lads, thank you. One, Jimmy! Let's go, find out, let's go, Maxi! Eighth minute, third scrum. No, Crouch! Boynt. Set. Bristol just getting a little bit of a shove on. Ben Young's told to retreat. Sheedy Randrandra did what he could to get the ball away, but um, Anthony Watson came in off his left wing to shut down the space. So line up. Yeah, just closing down fast, sees it, steps in, makes sure that he puts himself or stays on Randrandra's right side just so that he can block off that pass. Bristol get the throw. 
tipped off the top by Joe Batley. Another um, newcomer, or back in these parts at least. Again, Joffrey himself, who wasn't employed on that occasion. Instead, it was Byrne, Brian Byrne, the hooker. O'Connor away to Bailey. That's um, popped out of play. Topsy, what about the try, Randrandra and all that? Well, just looking at the threat Randrandra might pose and also how Bristol's shape really creates the space that they exploit for the try. You see him here as that deep decoy runner. He attracts two Leicester defenders to him. And because the defence is so narrow, they've got all that space on the outside. You've then got Leicester defenders all running to the corner flag. When you've got different body shapes like that, it means you can find gaps in between them. That momentum, that space is what leads to the try. And we were asking wisely before the match how long it would take um, Sammy Randrandra to Let's get his feet back place. under the table, how wise we were. Less than five minutes. Well, it's a nice Let's start go. of him because he didn't actually touch the ball. Actually, just the threat, the presence and the shape that Bristol run means that he can do that job. But in the last couple of phases, we now have started seeing with ball in hand. It's contact in the air and not now. It's contact in the air. Thank you. Harry Wells went up and... Um, was made contact within the air. Harry Wells, by the way, 100th start as a Tiger. OK, I knew you were going to say that. Yeah, fair point. The line out. He gets thrown Five years yeah. after his Premiership debut and, and as a replacement you. against Bristol. And he's involved Let immediately again. Oh, that's uh, Visa on his way through at some pace. Set up beautifully by Dan Kelly immediately. We're seeing what Dan Kelly brings to this Leicester midfield. Guy Porter again. Oh, and then it's dropped by Whitcomb. And in promising positions, both props, Whitcomb and Cole, have now spilt the ball. Genj goes after him after he makes the tackle as well, just to make sure he knows. Lovely ball from Kelly, goes straight to Kelly. They target Sheedy. Put a one on one for Visa on Sheedy, he runs through him. And then just drops the ball, perfectly intent. Bit of work to do after the last one. Perfectly OK That's to go good. through last with the tackle, one. but then... Oh, oh, yeah, that wasn't very good, was it, mate? I used to play in that shirt, I was better than you. <laughs> yeah, Wickham wearing the shirt worn by Genge last season. Actually, James Cronin uh, came in initially as, um, as Leicester's first choice to replace Genge, but Irishman Cronin injured at the moment. He'd been an ever-present. Up to the game last weekend against London Irish, so Whitcomb getting another go tonight. Bit of pressure on Genge there, his elbow just dropping slightly, he needs to stay up as well. Sheedy. Stewart. Piertau. Oh, he's evaded Stewart. Porter, as uh, Bristol again look to Stop go water. wide quickly. O'Connor, as he got the bouncing ball right, uh, Leicester can dab it down via their fullback. Really good work there by Charles Piatow under that high ball. Again, spoke pre kick off just about the impact. If there is going to be kicks, if the kick is slightly too long as that one was, Stewart probably needs to slow his feet because you know the left foot step is coming. Allows Bristol to counter-attack to find some good space. 18 carries against Sale last week, Charles Piertau. And nobody's been offloading the ball more in the Premiership this season either, Tops. The, the danger clear and apparent. Absolutely, you know, any time he's got the ball, either the step is coming or in contact, Ooh, the offload. About? Drop, goal, ambitious, inaccurate. Sorry, Topsy. Randrandra backwards. Burns. Back to Randrandra. Sheedy was there in support, but Randrandra likes to run. Oh, he's run into Freddie Burns. It was a good chewing gum tackle from Freddie Burns. Lay on the floor and hope the studs got caught, but he did a really good job. Huge carry. Genge to Sheedy to get it away quickly to Ibertoy. It's good energy about um, Bristol early on, that wasn't so good, but um, 
Diego Bailey semi-rescued it. Yeah, shot to nothing from Sheedy. Surprised we don't see this more. We've started to see it, which obviously saw a couple this year. But then watch Freddie Burns here as well, how he sprints Six. up to take the easy metres. No chase from Bristol, because Sheedy started dropping, didn't put anyone on side. So he gets a load of metres, but then he has to tackle Randrandra. That wasn't straight. It's uh, Julian Montosha. Puma quickly scoring tries again for the club last weekend. It's interesting to see Gabe Ibertoy warming up as well down below as Benny, not not far from you when you were chatting with uh, with Martin. He came back. Small break for Brought in uh, after Wasps' demise, and he will he'll play a a part. Not Gabe Ibertoy. Oh, great. Yeah, sorry. Oh, great. Yeah. Yeah, I think he could be a huge signing for Leicester. They've struggled a little bit with hookers after you scratch the surface, and obviously Montoya is the starter. Boys. Charlie Clare there as well. They've had a couple of injuries. Nick Dolly just adding to those ranks. Go, go, the former go. Wasps man, Will He's Porter. Outside. Oh, that's been charged down by Burns and went backwards. And Bristol a little bit fortunate to get away with that, but Leicester piling Brilliant over the top Kelly. and they turn it over. Kelly. That's a penalty. That's cynical, actually. Because he knows he's lost it and he actually pulls it back in. There's a set defence, it's not cynical. So that's why it's not a yellow card. He's saying the defence was set. Porter asking, but the ball was won by Leicester and he actually pulled it back into the ruck. But great counter ruck from Dan Kelly. Really good work by Freddie Burns initially as well. He's done his homework in the week, so he's up really quick. Thank you. Bounces the other way and he thinks he's in for a try, but. Yes, After Kelly's counter ruck here, does really well to hold off. Now he drives, get the legs going. The ball's in front, it's out, and he grabs it and pulls it back in. You can't say that's not cynical. Like, you can say that it's not a ye yellow card because the defensive set, but it's a pretty cynical bit of play from Sheedy. Bristol five, Leicester three. Freddie Burns with Tiger's first points of a Saturday evening. There's uh, Gabriel Ogre. Side uh, there, Handy signing as well, because I think Leicester have brought him primarily Ben as a as a hooker. But as we know, he can play, play in so the back well row as well. Row, yeah. yeah, really good as well. He wouldn't want to be an impact player, but very very good as an impact player off the bench as well. Just to give you that energy, just when people are starting to flag all action all around the field. I ought to say by the way that we saw Elliot Stook uh, warming up for Bristol pre-match. He's joined as well another one of those looking for work after wasps demise another great carry from visa just how he fights for those meters and then Batley charging it down and now it's leicester in a heap of bother off a charge down great work from joe Batley, helping to um fill holes in the second row at the moment which is one of the reasons why stuke has been brought in as injury cover and leicester have a penalty and Topsy throws his head back. Yeah, it's an easy one for Leicester, isn't it? Great work by Batley on the charge down. You think we've got them where we want, be patient. It's the high tackle, but the timing on that again. So we've seen it from both teams now. No protection close in and around the ruck. So when the nines are kicking, especially if they're kicking it low, if you get your timing right. Go on, yeah. The problem is, when you're tackling break. Visa, he gets in such a good body position Lads. and his strength and leg drive so good. You feel if you hold on to a thigh, you're just going to get dragged halfway down the field. So trying to hit around the upper body, but accuracy not quite there. First start as a Tiger since mid-October. He's, he's been running around, as you know, as a springbok. Started against Ireland in Dublin and against Italy in Genoa. Missed the game against England because... Um, it was outside the test window. World Rugby's officially sanctioned test window. We've seen them start well, then they went. Now they're Part back. of the win a week ago Quite against surprising. Irish, which, uh, as we've said, was not a thing of beauty, but it was a really important one for Leicester yeah. after losing three of their previous four in the Premiership against Saracens and Sale and Bath. 
started really well, but Irish fought back in the second half, but left the fight back just a little bit too late, and Visa and everyone. Leicester bagged the bulk of the points. Okay. The concern for well. Bristol in this game is they concede a lot of points at the back end of each half. Almost punch themselves out, so they need to almost rattle the scoreboard a little bit more. Otherwise, you'll feel Leicester might come into the game a bit more. Leicester started well last week, got put under pressure. They've got the penalty now. They've got a little bit of more stability in this game than they were experienced in the first 10 minutes. Kelly wants it. Claps his hand, shouts, Benny gets the ball. Your own player's foot that's stopping that. Interesting. Off the outside of the boot. Uh, Burns very nearly got there, but lost forward. So back we come. Uh, you've got leg lifts and it's six good on the floor. By Burns there. He knew he wasn't going to catch it clean, so he actually bats it forward to try and run on to catch it, knowing that they had the free shot. That's why the call was made for the kick over the top by Young. He actually tries to knock it deliberately forward to catch it himself. This is the situation Leicester want to be in as well. Penalties at the set piece. Uh, six collapse. Working their way down the field. Where we go, mate? Interesting as well, talking about Visa. The last line out Leicester had, you could see Sheedy, his eyes, because go. they're going to line up against him. So Sheedy's Seven. now thinking, right, where's Seven. Visa? Seven. I need support in and around me. That's going to have a knock on effect on Bristol's defence. He's not out there in the minute, but if he does, watch out. Burns and Porter. Providing his thrust through midfield. Youngs has it. Here is Visa. Held on to by Sam Lewis. Uh, there's We're another really penalty. Unlucky, you know the rest. Racking up the penalties a little it's bit a against Bristol, aren't they? The Particularly down in this area. It's going to have a, a, a chat with, uh, with Brett Deacon, I think. We're just checking to make sure that Freddie Burns away, doesn't go for touch. touch. He doesn't, they're going to go for post, so we're going to have a, a leisurely chat with uh, Brett Deacon. Uh, Brett, let's just talk about the try you've conceded, first of all, and, and, and the challenge you face today of, of dealing with a newly restored Randrandra. What have you talked about this week to try and bottle him up? Yeah, well, if you give, if you give him space, he's very dangerous. Um, so we need to take away his space. How you do that is uh, through your line speed. Um, but we need to you know, fill that field well enough to be able to do that. But yeah, he's dangerous, and um, if you give them opportunities, um, then uh, they'll take them. Topsy OJ was talking about the threat that he poses without the ball as well, those little dummy lines that he runs, which caused a, a little bit of a problem there on the way to the try. No, yeah, you have to defend him, whether, whether it's a, his carrier or as a decoy, but um, yeah, he's, he's a dangerous player, and we'll, uh, we, we've, we plan to take care of him. From your perspective, what are we seeing on the pitch at the moment that you've talked about this week up at Oval Park? Um, well, when we've when we've got into their uh, half and used our line out through attacking plays, we've been we look we look dangerous, especially with Jasper, uh, you know, attacking um, against Sheedy. So um, we'll look to do that. We're just unfortunate that we've uh, two two balls out in the full. Brett, the, obviously the scrum battle is going to be very interesting with Ellis going up against Dan Cole. Do, as they know each other so well, do they cancel each other out a bit? Just Ellis, just starting to creak a little bit on the on the last couple of scrums. Yeah, it's, it's, uh, it's a really good, respectful battle, isn't it? And um, we'll see how that on play, uh, unfolds as the night goes on. Always good to talk, Brett. Thank you. Cheers, Bob. That's gone forwards off the hands of Ibitoy. Well, again, very similar to the Anthony Watson earlier on Randrandra. This time it's Ashton. Again, as a winger, if you're going to shoot out the line, you've got to come up with something. And he does. He just puts enough pressure on Ibitoy there to force him to pass the ball forwards. Seen any replays, Craig? Yeah, me neither. Well, From a Harlequin back in the Prem via um, Ajang, Montpellier, Tel Aviv Heat. Not a club we talk about much. Bears debut last month against Saracens. Sounds warmer at Tel Aviv Heat than it does for the Bristol Bears at Ashton Gate tonight. But I've already lost touch with my toes, I don't know about you two. Boys. Set. Nine, get out of there. And Cole goes flat on his stomach this time. Visa under a lot of pressure. From the scrum half, Will Porter. Sorry about the language. 
Good shot from Ellis Genge as well. Backs up a good scrum with a really dominant tackle there. Bit of protection. Yes, and that's gone directly into touch. Please don't do that again. Brett talking about the inaccuracy of some of Leicester's kicking going dead. That's gone out. Wasn't even close, that one, was it? I just spoke to him. Had really good protection this time as well. See Rafael's come in to create that caterpillar. Bounces well out. Brian Byrne, interestingly, over the top, Ibertoy. Set on his way by Heenan. Oh, Genge knew he had no time at all. Brilliant, just shepherded it on its way. And then the break and the score and Piertau. Oh, Bristol, that's a bit more like it. So that, that, is a, now. that is an absolute stunning try. The hands from Genge first. And then that floated ball over the top. You won't see much better all season. Just brilliant timing from Ellis Genge. Good ball over the top of the line. Ibatoy back on the inside, nearly gets through. He holds defenders. Look at all those red shirts congregating around the ruck. They miss one with that just sublime offload from Genge and then floated over the top from Sheedy. And then who do you want on the end of it to dr drag? All those red shirts over the line. The Charles Peart, a little show and go, and then using that strength to take Stewart. Sorry, Benny, nearly cut you off. Just, I was excited as you were. Say so the first two phases just narrowed Leicester's defence up so much. But a lovely pass by Sheedy. Really, really good score. 12 6. What was better? Gellis is uh, uh, Gellis, 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 let's call him Gellis. <laughs> Gellis's hands or Piotr's? Oh. Like Sheedy's pass was Sheedy's just pass brilliant well, yeah. for him to drift onto. Throw it into the space, off you go. Back off the blue for me. Oh, Bristol have scored two very nicely worked tries. Two of the main threats around Drandra and Pia Tower have scored them. Well, you mentioned earlier about, you know, for a team that prides themselves on accurate kicking in a kick chase game. There you go. Bristol definitely oh, profiting from Leicester's inaccuracy with the kicking so far. Two gone dead. Ben Young's yeah, kick go out on the fall, giving Bristol opportunities to strike back from the set piece. Oh, well, Set. Okay, just those extra meters and three bodies pulled in to defend him, but slow ball. Freddie Burns, tear out. That's been passed to a different player, so you can't go quick. 17 all black caps, one now for Tonga. Made his debut in July, part of World Rugby's relaxation of the rules about players who would have been eligible to play for one country, opted for another. Have not been picked for three years for the country that initially picked them. Molly Chesham, very much front and centre of England's plans long term. Ooh, and he's driven backwards. Bristol absolutely up for this. And then it's cleared by Porter. Stewart. No in advance yet. Oh, that's uh, that's a mark. Where you are, Chris, a tight angle with not much of a chase. Not sure whether he actually would have wanted to mark that. They might go quickly, but a really good counter up. Straight in on the ball. Lewis there, and then pops it back to his side. Make sure they clear it. Leicester being pressurised. There's the pressure from Ashton this time. 
come back to exactly the same starting play as last time. Made a really good attempt, Line out for Leicester on the 10 metre line. Sam Lewis that arrived at the start of the season after, after Worcester let him go in the summer before they went out of business. He's 32 now, but he can still do a job, Sam Lewis, my goodness. Beasts are in the middle again. There's Kelly with him, doesn't give him it this time. Young's Cole. Tackle, Bristol. There you go. Montosha. Burge, oh my goodness, he's got absolutely clobbered by Randrandra. That's going to have to be looked at. Well, he's getting up. Oh. Freddie Burns, but... He's out of control, Randrandra. There is mitigating cir circumstances that he falls backwards and is low, Freddie Burns, but there is high danger from Randrandra. He could be in trouble here. He's going to be treated, so plenty of time. If nothing comes of it, Leicester had the ball, yeah? Goodness. He is low, isn't he? He's dropped Freddie Burns as he leans back onto his knee, but that's a high shot at speed. So I right, think... Craig, we do need to have a look at this, please. I think they'll start at red and might find some mitigation to drop it to oh, yellow, yeah. but uh, it's a big it's a kick. Let's look at the point of contact, please. Yeah. So he's... Yeah, you said it, he's flying out of the line, so he has a clear line of sight of this, but let's just check the contact point first. Timo's Claire Hodnett. The, the point of contact is direct to head. Uh, yeah, so it's the bicep, isn't it, hitting him directly on the head? Yes. OK, so so foul play, I think we do have foul play. Let's have another look yes, at that. Yes, he's, he's, he's upright. reckless. Yeah, so it's upright, so he could be lower. Bicep is hitting him in the head. So the degree of danger will be high because he knocks the player backwards into ground, correct? Yes. And then from mitigation, the player's on his knees, isn't he? So he we is, have, and then he's falling. Knees. So we have mitigation, so it's a yellow card against Bristol 13. It is Bristol 13, yes. So we're happy with that, yep. Yeah. Agree, Jamie? No arguments, Coxie? No, absolutely not. It's it's reckless. He picked his line and he wasn't changing regardless. Uh, Mr. Gator Fax is on his knee. We're thankful that Burns was as low as he was to avoid any real danger, but yeah, that's very reckless. And absolutely, yellow card. he's on his knee. I still think he's slightly fortunate because it, because his speed was so high, he had lost all element of control. So, I think, as I said, I think it's the right decision, yellow. But there will be people watching this at home saying, "Well, what's rugby doing about player welfare if you allow people to go that far out of control to make a hit around someone's head?" Can't tell whether Freddie's happy to be coming off for an HIA or not. He has to. He uh, absolutely has to, doesn't he? Yeah. It is a HIA. In the meantime, Charlie Atkinson ran out at Welford Road for the first time last weekend as a Tiger. And uh, well, a lovely little juxtaposition now. Former Wasp Charlie Atkinson against former Wasp Will Porter. It's, it's not a storyline that will cheer up. Wasp supporters any, but they were very much the future at 9 and 10 for that club. Yeah, bittersweet. Happy to see these guys been able to carry on their careers and get some invaluable see, game time, but there'll be Wasp fans looking at it going, <laughs> we wish they were still with us in black and gold. Important throw for Montage, missed his last one. Picks out Ollie Chesson. Yeah, Engages right. with the bulk of his forwards again, Montosha. Youngs, oh, and then driven on by Kelly. Going to have a look at it. On-field decisions important. What a carry from yes, Kelly. On-field try. I'm unsighted as I come round. So check on field. No on, on-field on is try. try. Just wants to check the grounding. So he thinks he's seen the ball on the floor. He wants to check. There's no knock-on. Brilliant angle back against the grain. Carries Porter with him all the way to the line, then rolls. Does that hand? Try no, that's placed. Good, that's a try. 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 Thank you. The strip comes after where the knock on happens. Thank you. Keep that on, mate. Well, first semi ran Drandra after oh. a long term injury back in the try scoring business, and now Dan Kelly. Ah, fair question. <laughs> first run out since that Premiership semi final against 
Northampton back in the summer. And now in bobble hat weather, he's reminding us what he's all about. Absolutely. It's a brilliant line by Dan Kelly. But also when we get a second, have a look at the work by Anthony Watson as well. Just a really good example of sending two attackers at one defender, confusing him, throwing different decisions to make at him and picking the right option. Charlie Atkinson. Seconds on, immediately with a sighter of Bristol's posts. And the Bears hold on to um, a one-point lead, but it is now just a one-point lead. Yeah, good line-out drive to hold in those numbers. You can see Bristol do a good job of protecting it. Ben Young starts out and then pound for pound. There's not many more powerful carriers around other than Kelly. He's not the biggest, but certainly makes every kilo pay its price. I can see Jasper Visa dropping the ball. It went backwards, but um, it gave Bristol hope, and they're working so hard to try and get that back. Lua Tua wrestling away, but Leicester have done just enough. Don't pull him through. Yes, please. Lua Tua was interested in the uh, attempt at the charge down. Oh, and oh, poor old Diego Bailey. It's only 20, stepping up for the injured Luke Morahan today. It's only his second Premiership game after a debut last month against Saracens. Just trying to steal some extra milliseconds to get back in line. You could see the defenders coming that were going to try and smash him into touch. He just tried to leave slightly before the ball, just so he could step back on the inside so he didn't get tackled in. Topsy, there's an awful lot of talk about what <laughs> a, a, who England's coach might be in the Six Nations, but but after that, what England's midfield might look like. Before he was injured, Dan Kelly was absolutely part of that debate, wasn't he? Where might he fit in over the next couple of months, do you think? Well, I think if he can stay fit and build up ahead of steam and get to where he was pre-injury, I think he puts his name in that conversation because... I think we need more options at 12. If we're looking at our 12 being a ball-carrying option in that angle of midfield, we need to build depth outside of Manitou Elangi. So Dan Kelly would be in there, Ollie Lawrence would be in there. But also looking at guys that don't just crash the ball up, that can actually distribute as well, offer multiple threats. That's what you need to build. You don't want one trick, you want variety in that midfield. Ollie Lawrence played well last night at the wreck. Yeah, another good game for him. There we go. Life's, life's a out. beach. Life's a beach. Point. That's how to spend a yellow card. Looks cold. Yeah, it does. Box of teasers, and honestly, that's about as good as life gets, isn't it? Anyway, off we go. Porter to Ashton, who's done more kicking than running so far in this match. Uh, Tia Tau's done a bit of both, and he's been scoring tries as well. A little bit quicker from Leicester in the setup here. They're just trying to get the pace back on the game, I think. When they can, when they've got the ball, they'll kick it to slow it down, but they want tempo when they're attacking. They're also trying to get Visa opposite Sheedy. So that's the try scorer, the inside centre, Kelly, who straightens things up, Montosha and Atkinson, and here's Porter and Ashton running the line alongside neatly, and Leicester with a real purpose about what they're about. That's a penalty. That was ripped on the floor by the tackler. Been missed by the referee. Kelly again, who took it in. Liebenberg waits. Moments of some concern, these for the Bears and their noisy supporters. Youngs, oh, he was very nearly through, and my goodness, Max Laheef did a job to shut the door, but for how much longer? Leicester again, keeping it straight, direct, physical. Needs to go left longer, big numbers for Leicester. Wells nearly there, taking the shortest route. Now they... Go a little bit wider off, no way through for Porter. And we dropped back to the edge of the Bristol City penalty box. 
Visa on his marks, all over his uh, left shoulder. Release. Might have slowed him a tad. Give time yes, for the likes of Batley and Co to cover the run. Wells again looking to add some Leicester momentum. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Heenan slowing it as much as he can for Bristol. Atkinson. Oh, no way through. The work of Lua Tua. And now Leicester going once more. And Kelly again providing that threat. Oh, the ball was there. Stay out of the side, no. Heenan no. thought it was there to be won, not quite. Liebenberg. See how much further Leicester and Montosha have to go. Visa lays it back. Young's Cole. Nearly there. Space. Liebenberg there. Wickham there. Liebenberg. Tries to negotiate an extra half a metre or so. Rafael, not the option. Leicester go wide. Ashton! The greatest scorer of tries in Premiership history has another. Outstanding from Leicester again, Dan Kelly. So often the catalyst in those sparks of momentum that Leicester got. Really, really good from Leicester at times this season. When they've got five metres out, they've been too narrow focused, not seen opportunities in the wider channels, but having done their job of dragging all those blue shirts in, stand and deliver, and Chris Ashton just pins his ears back and goes between two and slides in. It's a good score from Leicester. Really good patience as well, because initially when they went wide, they went wide when it wasn't on, they should have gone earlier. But that ability just to rebuild, to get back to within striking range and then pull the trigger at the right time. Record stretch to 98, two away from 100. Way to go, eh? Relatively happy visiting coach, I would imagine. And it's interesting, Benny, you talk about how Bristol tend to fall away at the back end of moved. halves. Kelly and now Ashton have scored yeah. tries for Leicester. Yeah, I just wonder, we saw Leicester trying to speed things up in the back end of this half with their setup for that last line out. Well, no. The scoring profiles of teams that play against Bristol. Well, no, there's opportunities. And they find the opportunity and execute it very, very well here. We didn't see any. There are two Bristolian questions being asked. You'd have heard Claire Hodnett and Craig Maxwell Keys yeah, have another look at it. Just um, Pumping a bit more air in the tire in the tires of Semi Randrandra. He's uh, 90 seconds away from coming back out Take onto the back. track. Three minutes to half time. Ooh. Diego Bailey's not had a good ten minutes under the high ball. Just slightly misjudged that. Had to readjust at the last minute. Didn't do it well enough. Yeah, that that last one he dropped. We said he was trying to get off the touchline. There's not an excuse here. Maybe just. Hovering in the back of his mind, how oh, he didn't manage to field this last kick. Just steps, loses the flight of it, doesn't he? Just has to readjust at the last minute. England under 20 grand slammer. Uh, player of, um, of huge potential, as those two will know. Connor McPhillips and uh, Pat Lamb, of course. If they crank. The last one stayed in, yeah. I don't see where the crank is. If it hits the deck, absolutely, but I thought it was just a good contest in the air. Where are we, mate? Yeah. <laughs> Come on then. It's a tough life. Gonna have to get out of bed soon. Semi. Same work, Here comes Freddy. He's had his head injury assessment and he has passed it, and Richard Wigglesworth. Passing on some instructions. Richard Wigglesworth, incidentally, pretty much leading Leicester's attack coaching these days. Um, combining that with the occasional game as a player as well. Matt Smith helping him out, but um, it's, uh, it's Wigglesworth who tends to lead the way. Visa off the base of that scrum. Leicester with a um, real purpose now and 
Tommy Rafael. I've mentioned his name too often so far this evening, player of the match against Irish a week ago, and uh, he draws the penalty. That's an interesting kick. Oh, it works out perfectly now. Ashton, he might fancy this. He was forced to go the long way. There was a just a clever little bit of shape-shifting from Charles Piertau. Nothing Le illegal. Le Leicester just being offered the initial penalty that the referee's playing advantage for. All the line out, the 10 metres yeah, out. Okay. They'll take that and try and get it five metres out from the line. Uh, meantime, Sam Lewis heading towards us on the touchline. So uh, Dan Thomas already on. And this is a replacement. This isn't um, a head injury replacement. Uh, talking of which, Charlie Atkinson, who was on for 10 minutes, uh, is back on for Freddie Burns. And he's back. Samir Andrandra having served his yellow card for the um, collision with the head of Freddie Burns. Well, Pat Lamb's just walked past us, ready to go down for his half-time team talk. I'm sure he'll be saying just cut out these silly errors, silly penalties, and they have to stop Leicester's initial punch carries from the likes of Kelly and Visa, have to stop them at source, not give them any momentum. Leicester have already scored a couple of tries heading towards half-time. Maybe a fifth, Chesham. Up there, Rafael helping out, Heenan hoisted out of the way, and now Leicester and Montosha go. Don't know how they stop this, they don't. My goodness, Leicester have rolled up their sleeves and flexed their muscles over the last few minutes. Well, it's a good drive, isn't it? The patience is good, Lua Tua trying to stop Leicester rolling in field. Every time he's done that, Leicester have decided to go straight. First time Bristol have got it wrong, we saw James Whitcomb just pulling a couple of the Bristol players that had spun round to Leicester's side, not trying to fight with them, just pulling them the way they'd come, straight out the back of it. And as soon as Bristol lose the numbers, there's Lua to it. And I think it's Heenan, isn't it, that just gets dumped out. No, sorry, Lahif just gets dumped out. Genj yes. behind them all as well. Nothing they can do when they get to that stage. Lua Tua just trying to roll Dan Cole out, but Montoya oh, in the pocket, always going to get to the line. Leicester with three tries in ten minutes. Turn this match on its head after Bristol scores for Semi Randrandra. Charles Piertau. Burns back with us. Slap, bang, between the posts, my goodness, that was a very good last ten minutes for the visitors, and they move ahead um, emphatically at half-time. Randrandra and Piatau first up, and then Kelly and Ashton and Montosha, and the champions doing champions things. Half-time at Ashton Gate, Bristol 12, Leicester 23. Well, the Bears in a, a bit of a premiership trough right now that they're keen to get out of. Staring down what would be a seventh defeat in a row. The sixth loss was against Sale last weekend. It's actually their worst trot since they were promoted back to the premiership four years ago. A run that started up in Newcastle. And you may remember a heavy defeat here to Exeter. And it's not got better since. 40 minutes ahead for um, Callum Sheedy and co to do something about it. No changes to either side at half time, incidentally. Okay, it's on the chase, Bristol. Time's up. Sheedy picks out Visa. Tacklers! Yes, please. Young's clearing kick. Watson, we did so well to get underneath that. And Imani Nandolo posting pictures on social media from Sydney this week. He's already over there with his family. And that's been charged out. And how about this? 
and the chase from Thomas gets back up off his feet. Ball picked up by O'Connor and Bristol with a wonderful opportunity. And again, it's Thomas. How many charge downs have we had in this match so far? Porter waits. Leicester sandbagging. Cole They've lost has it. it. Oh, and Cole. Tom, how have Bristol oh. not scored there? Ibatoy is going ballistic. Well, he's actually going back for the ball here now, but he should be going ballistic. Well, you'll have heard Craig Maxwell Keys tell us that there was a knock on somewhere in the middle of all that, right towards the end of it. Randrandra. On the body, not the ball. How on earth? How on earth have the Bears not scored? Lua to it. And Leicester have the penalty, double bloke. Heartbreaker for Pat Lamb and Bristol. All these Bristol fans, that cast iron try scoring opportunity. Brilliant from Dan Thomas, goes through, makes the charge down, goes straight forward so he can carry his run. He struggles a bit with the pickup, that's fine, he does the right thing. Offloads, they are walking into the left there, Ibatoy. Now, still they're walking in. But someone picks and goes, and then they pick, it's still walking in, Ibatoy. Oh no, we'll have another pick and go. Oh, just needed one voice saying, leave it, it's on wide. Just wondering how noisy Topsy OJ would have been in an Irish shirt. It'd in a be noisy situation. now afterwards. <laughs> what on earth, yeah, Tops? Was, uh, there's nothing worse. I mean, you love to score tries, it's the easiest thing there. And you're looking at pick and go, pick and go when you're stood with no one around you. I mean, they could have even come to the right. They had three players in about 20 metres. And now you have to defend the line out. Oh, if Leicester score from this, Watson started at uh, fullback last weekend. Visa. Porter shape to chase the kick. Burns goes the other way. Great Ooh. kick. Diego Bailey again, chilly fingers, but not chilly feet, hot feet. That's what he does well. Sheedy. Yep. Stewart. Is an option. Bailey. Thought about that a long time and uh, got us cleanly. Ironic cheer from the fans gets that one. You think he might get peppered for the rest of this game from Leicester? Pietau. Stewart's favourite for this. And then he almost rolls away from Pietau. Had perhaps his his most uncomfortable afternoon in an England shirt at Twickenham against South Africa, but back to something like his best here tonight. Yes, so Joe Batley doing what he could to get his hands on the ball. Watson up high with um, Pietau. Bristol have it on halfway. Pez O'Connor shifts it the other way. Laheef, part of the crew that finds Sheedy. Brian Byrne. Heenan. Visa over the top with real purpose. Ah. All about Visa that, Leicester still have to secure the ball. Taken in by Wells. Whitcomb wanders in. No time. Hooked away by Ben Youngs and Randrandra. Oh, he takes on Rafael, who got oh, he's got to his feet very unsteadily. I'm sure that Tommy Rafael. Uh, and the independent video doctors will be having another look at that. Rafael is actually shaking his, his left shoulder. Yes, please. Either way, it was a hefty collision. And again, an airborne test for Stewart, which he flies through with ease. 50-22 is on. He's inside. Now, Piotr in the end ends the madness. Just that turnover, the, the effect of Chesham looking like he's going in, then backing out here. 
looks like he's going to compete, backs out. So the man thinks he's won it now, he thinks it's easy. In comes Visa at the last minute and knocks Byrne backwards over his own feet. Leicester steal the ball. Sometimes counter-rucking's best at the, when it's done later. Really good carry from Randrandra on Rafael. But sometimes when you counter-ruck, if you go in when everyone's expecting it, you're never going to win a turnover. When everyone's switched off because they think the ball's won, that's the time to counter-ruck. Tommy Rafael telling the medics he's OK. It's not really the point, to be honest. It's not for a player to tell the medic that he's OK. Nope. Liebenberg. It's a good contest for the ball, it was, and Luatu was up there, but it was Liebenberg, and now Leicester knock on, and it's the hint that Bristol might have done, but Byrne recovered it, and then O'Connor chases the kick. 20, get out! Ashton. Don't get involved. Do not rather, get involved. Stewart well done. gets his um, feet to the ball and slips, but still somehow finds touch. <laughs> a little bit of a wry smile. How oh, the hell did that go out? <laughs> Brian Burn. No to it. This is Dan Thomas, who came on incidentally in the first half of the injured Sam Lewis, if you're recently joining us. A bit loose there, Bristol. They let yes, Leicester please. go right through the middle of that mall. Just little details that makes a big difference to your attack. Sorry for the language. Hoisted by Will Porter. There's what Anthony Watson does. Chases his kick, picked up by Piatau. Tackle, Dad! Tackle! We're really unlucky, but I call tackle twice. He's absolutely right. Twice. He's absolutely right. He is really unlucky. He did call, call tackle, tackle twice. twice. The knee was down. But when that cookie jar's open, really Dan unlucky. Cole couldn't help but put his hands in it. Look, he's on the ball but the knee drops, so he has to release now. He's part of the initial tackle, so he has to show a clear release before he goes back at the ball. 48th minute, and it's the first penalty Leicester have conceded, wow. which is a statistic worth underlining. It's a tough one, that one, as well. You think you're just about to rip the ball away, so it almost goes against your instinct to then leave it alone, but there was clear communication. <laughs> Hold them, please, Jamie. Jamie Lee, the uh, the smiling assistant. Okay, second ball's off. Let's go. Down below us. Thank you. Craig That's Maxwell, he's the referee. The hooker, Irishman Brian Byrne. Ooh, felt it like me a little bit short for Vui, but he rearranged his hands in time. What? Ooh, facial there from Vui. Where, ah. Where's the ball, Ollie? <laughs> Dan, Dan Cole doing a bit of crowd surfing. It's all going off. It's Bristol on a Saturday Nick, night. Nick. And here's Ellis Genge. Porter. Bristol probably feel they've got to score the next try. Uh, Visa making sure that um, they don't. He's had an exceptional game. Visa again. Otherwise, Lua to it. Yeah, bit He's of a mess. No idea. He's about and to do that. Uh, Just Leicester That's will event. have the scrum. By the way, the, the Premiership's brilliant statistician, Stuart Farmer, telling us this week that Leicester are making Premiership history tonight. If you haven't heard, they have become the first team to field seven backs who are all England internationals. Plenty of examples of clubs picking six before, 13 to be precise. The last were Saracens four years ago, but this is the first time we've had a full house, all seven, and there's a man who's played more than anybody else. Um, ben Youngs and Guy Porter. Who else have we got? Dan Kelly. Essentially, our, ca our crack camera folk can pick out 
any Leicester player amongst the bats. You just have bats. to recognise them. You just have to know who they are. That's Chris Ashton, I think. Well done. And he's played for England. So is he again. Who are we missing? I think we've done them all. Anyway. Oh, Freddie, we've forgotten Freddie. How can we forget Freddie? It's quite an achievement, that, though, Tops, isn't it? That's oh, worth applauding. as well, and as you're reeling off the names, also through the ages as well, you've got some of them just on their journey. You know, you've got Ben Young sitting at the top of the tree, some in the middle. Yeah, we're good, Let's have a chat with, um, with, with, with Pat Lamb. Uh, Pat, I'm sure there are lots of things on your mind at the moment. One of the things that, that, that Ben Kay pointed out at half-time was, was how comparatively uh, low the carries numbers are, ball in hand. I just wonder whether that's something that's on your mind at the moment. Probably more of the penalty count, 10-0. I think we've just got one now. I mean, uh, that's... Because um, there's been some great effort, and, and obviously the yellow card and then uh, three tries, but certainly the, the penalty count gave back-to-back -back goes there. Now, here we go, 11-1 now. Is it what they're doing or what you're doing? Well... You know, it's like anything, it's, it's there's always two teams. <laughs> and um, But certainly 11-1 penalty count for us. We spoke about it at halftime. You know, no, there's no doubt that, you know, some of them are definitely ours. But um, like there's two sides playing and, and obviously the, the the double efforts is the big ones. You know, like you're, you're giving up field position, you're giving up territory, you're giving up position. And is that impacting on why we're not maybe seeing you carrying the ball with the thrust that, that we often do? You've scored a couple of cracking tries, but I, I don't know whether that number's significant. Yeah, well, it means that we're stuck in our area of the field defending and when we're getting the ball. So we talked about our exits as well. I mean, we lose the, we've lost a couple of kick battles, um, and we know that ex uh, Leicester uh, are very good at it. And, um, and then we're back in our half again. So hopefully we've, we've spoken about being able to get some opportunities to play in the other end of the field as well. Oh. Hopefully we'll get some shortly. Good stuff. Cheers, Pat. Outside. Cheers. Yes. Ibatoi. As um, Bristol tried to do what um, Pat Lamb talked about. As soon as Ibatoi went then, Leicester, even before the tackle had been made, Leicester screamed turnover. They wanted to target that counter-attack. Leicester with a couple of changes. Uh, Francois van Fake in the front row for Whitcomb and uh, Jack van Portfleet adding that thrust. Another England player amongst the backs and Freddie Burns takes them up to the 22. Van Portfleet keeps them going. Porter. Still every single Leicester back, a current England international. Visa, a current Springboks. Burns. Connor needs to be secure with his tackling. Pat! Harry Wells. Tackle now. Yeah, Bristol work, having man. to work hard to um, repel this red tide. Liebenberg. Oh, the ball was there to be taken, and it's um, brilliantly lift. done by Jake Heenan. Right decision. Just at times, Leicester in that those phases. Not 100% sure who was going to get the ball, so you had two players running, both of them thinking they're getting it here, and then Chesham just goes past the man, so he can't quite get out in the clear-out position. Just need to stagger their lines a bit. They can both still get it, but at the moment they're both flat to the line, so if one player gets tackled with the ball, the second player can't do anything to go and clear out. But you're right about... In terms of tactics and territory, Leicester very happy for Bristol to run it in these areas of the pitch because this is where they're happy to expend energy, make their tackles, turn the ball over, attack in Bristol's third, as opposed to doing that. It's where you get into kind of that kick versus run debate. At the moment, Leicester are saying we're not going to do too much in on our own half, we're going to play the ball down that end, we're going to wait for Bristol to make mistakes, use that to create opportunities. Brian Burns still with us. Harry Thacker, former Leicester hookers on the bench. Thomas comes away with it. Another penalty. A ball stripped away by Montosha, but it'll merely draw the blast of the whistle. And one of those long holds from the lifters. Just hold the player up in the air, see if you can tempt Leicester to think the drive's coming. Luatua stays up, stays up. Then the hit comes in from Dan Cole on Ellis Genge. And just slightly too early. To Referee's just seen the replay and just telling Lua to make sure 
that the players aren't held in the air too long, but he's done his job. That'll bring him down quicker. Well, Bristol might be in the shadowy end of the Premiership table at the moment, but they are still only eight points at the moment adrift of Leicester in sixth. 12 points shy of Gloucester, who won today, they're fourth. So bottom but not out of it by a long way, but they clearly, you don't need me to tell you, neither do they, that they need to start winning some matches and Heenan doing what he can. Ibertoy. And Porter gets them going again, so too Randrandra. Brilliant read from Kelly of Randrandra's line, it was fantastic. Wide ball to Piertau. Bears looking just to stretch that defence a little bit. Visa with the tackle. Fabulous stuff around the ball at the moment from both sides. Genj. Luatua. Porter. Sheedy. Randrandra. Liebenberg all over him. Quite hold his feet, Liebenberg. Now Cole's over it. Uh, he's done enough. Very few get limp it down off the ball when he's on it. Well, Leicester definitely targeting the breakdown more than they often do. But just watch here, Randrandra's line's brilliant, but spotted well from Kelly. He tries to go behind Freddie Burns, who's looking back at the breakdown. Does a really good job of just stepping in, following him. And then Dan Cole stays on his feet, takes a step back to allow Byrne to fall right underneath him. They're also getting their decision making and the breakdown spot on as well. The first breakdown off the lineup, they left alone completely. They said, we'll leave that one, we'll wait for our moment. They had a couple of nibbles. And then at the moment when Bristol went more lateral than direct, some really good carries. Randrandra appears out. They end up going a bit lateral. Leicester pick their moment, turnover. Callum Sheedy replaced by AJ McGinty at fly half. Must have brought on George Martin. Never a more. That hits me. Leicester scrum. No scrum. The ball hits me. Confirmation that it's um, Tommy Raphael who's made way for the ball is hit me. for Martin. The ball hits me. That's one. Hit me. Too slow. Here's AJ time. McGinty. Yeah, time off, please. Eight's down. Irish American who's swapped the English Northwest for the English Southwest this season. Digesting the pain of missing uh, out on yeah, the World Cup one, as yeah, well. Drawing to Portugal in that playoff match. <laughs> Not enough to book their ticket to um, to France next season. Uh, lads, we're taking a water break. Jasper Visa just getting some on, Peter. Well treatment. Done, In the meantime, all the buzz of uh, a European rugby back with us again for the first time this season next weekend, opening round of a, a new look Champions Cup. Every game with us here on BT Sport, including the opener in West London next Friday night. There London yeah. Irish against Montpellier on air 7.15 BT Hello. Sport 2. Irish back in Europe for the first time in a while under a Parisian roof on Saturday lunchtime for Racing and Leinster and at the same time Europe's stretching to the Indian Ocean South African teams involved for the first time Sharks welcoming Harlequins to Durban and uh, on Sunday tea time Leicester in Swansea for their opener against the Ospreys Swansea or Durban Topsy where would you choose to go? Sitting where we are right now. <laughs> I know. Swansea, I... every time. <laughs> uh, time on that, lads, we're here. Sharks are more dangerous in Swansea. Elliot had sought out the Sharks. So go swimming with Elliot Stook. Good to see him back involved. He's, uh, he's one of the game's good guys, Elliot Stook. He's, my goodness, he needs a bit of fortune. Broken leg when he was at Wasps, and then Wasps go out of business, and we wish him all the best under his new bobble hat here at Bristol. You've been to Durban recently. Is, is Joe Cool still there? Do you remember Joe Cool's the bar on the Indian? What do you don't, Ben? 
<laughs> ben looking at me like he's never heard of the place. I'm more concerned about you being in there. That's You've got a loyalty card. It's got shares. So, as soon as Nick walked in, it became <laughs> Joe Uncalled. <laughs> Anyway, if you're a Quinns fan heading to Durban next weekend, Five. Joe calls. Tell him Ben sent you. Set it. Ready. Back here at a, a very so he chilly Bristol. Francois van Feit winning penalties. Well, that penalty count's not going to be pleasing. Pat Lamb anymore, anytime soon. So Max starts to drive through. I recognise Dave Allred next to, uh, to Pat Lamb. Uh, yeah, so um, got the end of the line. Familiar face of old. Um, part of um, England's World Cup winning Seven. coaching team all those years ago, the, uh, the kicking guru. The line, kind of revolutionised the way players, Johnny Wilkinson in particular, thought about kicking, Benny. Absolutely. And it wasn't just the that kicking the element, the obviously, the very big into his psychology as well, Thank which you. helped Johnny in those high-pressure moments. That's set. Maybe with a little bit of psychological stardust at the moment, Bristol get themselves back into this game. Final 20. They try and get the ball off the likes of Ollie Chesson first. Don't pull people out. Liebenberg and Lua Tua leaning in opposite directions. Chris Huey leaning in the blue direction as well, but it's red ball. Montosha. Let go. Good choice. 60th minute. Visa. As he has almost every minute, charging forward with the ball, Van Portfleet. Penalty. Chris Ashton screaming for it, waving for it on this near side. Leicester's left. Pierre Tower's seen him now and he's covered. Burns, Kelly. Oh, Stewart, brilliantly. Ashton, the arch poacher, but that was. Oh, the tackle of Pierre Tower. Forcing in the end the error from Porter. Porter had just stepped in at the final moment to go and support, oh, hadn't he? A little bit of a ruck between Freddie Stewart and I think Piers O'Connor. But Stewart's line's brilliant, comes from so deep that he can just burst onto the line. That forces Piers Tower to step in. And a bit of footwork from Ashton leaves it in the air. And Porter had just decided that Chris Ashton needed a little bit of support on the floor and changed his line. Little stutter step doesn't quite get off either foot. Oh. So close, isn't it? Puts it where he expects him to be, kind of running that line, that tracking line that Ashton does. Well, that close to uh, his 99th Premiership try. Joe Hayes about to come on for Dan Cole, by the way. <laughs> Here he comes as Leicester stretch their lead. Bristol 12, Leicester 26. Is he already on? Uh, on you, thank you. Leicester two oh, scores. Clever! Oh, maybe That's not for long. That should be a penalty to Bristol if they don't score. Lua uh, Tua so held well. back. Porter. Screaming for it on this right-hand side. It's a bouncing ball. It's Randrandra. And it's a brilliant score. I Diego Bailey. I think it's feet are in touch. But if it's not, they've got to come back and look at the chase down that blind side on the other side of the field. On field, try. Check it's not on in field, touch. try. Let's players. have a look at these trailing okay, boots. Uh, on field, try. Peter, that's ooh, he might be all right. No, feet down first. No, we are in touch. 
Um, yeah. But if you want it, there's Burns a penalty in the back end, on doing the, the far defensive side job. for the well, Bristol player being It could be a back. yellow card, because I think it's yeah, Ibatoy that, that gets held back the, with all his pace. Side of the pit. Okay. It's no try. I'm just going to show you that, just so you can have a look at it. Going back for a penalty. Look at it now. Pull someone off the ball. Give me one second. It's the guy with There's the dreadlocks. There's Ibatoy getting held. OK, so the penalty's back on the five metres, 22. Yeah, yeah 22 metres, so five. No try, um, but we're going back for a pull back off the ball. It's your penalty over here. It's Liebenberg who your pulls penalty. back so played off Gabriel the ball. Ibatoy. No try because he's in touch. Your penalty. Actually, right, so the pull back on you, yeah. South African Steve Borthwick chose to replace Elij Genj as so no skipper this season. Touch, pull back off the ball. I don't know. I don't think there is a card, is there? Because it's Luatua who gets to the ball first. Penalty. Six, I think. Whether he would have been uh, yes. able to you. take it without the intervention of Liebenberg. Oh. Bristol have to settle on, themselves for the, the penalty and how they could do with a result from this line out. It's a good kick right on the five. Before the line out, Harry Potter on for Dan Kelly, who's played his first hour of first team rugby since the uh, back end of last season. And he's picked up where he left off at the back end of last season. Porter has slid into inside centre. Harry Potter's taken Porter's role outside. Great game from Kelly on his return, though. How many, please? How many? Seven. Chipped Try in with one of Tigers' five yeah. tries last Sunday against the Irish. Yes. And they yeah. are the backs contemplating what might face them off this Bears line-out. Burns snaps it in, Bowie up highest. Leicester trying to push them towards the touchline. Bristol do really well to straighten things up. Lahif. Leicester offside, Vui, hoping that the bounce might have taken him over the line. Going to need one, at least one more hefty shot. Oh, there are too many red bodies there, and Joe Hayes was one of them. Yeah, it was held up, wasn't it? Got a lot of body, bodies underneath Leicester there, but the penalty had already coming. Good height, but... Joe Hayes doing a good job of just falling backwards uh, with the tackle, Offside. trapping the ball. Not. Hayes who gave away this penalty, here comes Genge. A snorting Genge. Heenan furthest to his left, but Genge goes on his own to the right, didn't go far, but Heenan picks up. Uh, Visa buffeted off the ball, Genge again, barking out the orders, Batley with the first surge, Vui with the second. Bristol folk adding their vocal encouragement. And there's the response, and there's the try. Genj wants something else looking at. Genj wants the tackle on him looking at. He's asked the referee to check head on head. I think he's got a point. Brian Burns got the try. Okay, so one thing at a time. Let's the try off. Let me do the try third. And then we'll look at that. Time off. Genj ran very upright and he met, was met with an upright. Yeah, that's definitely head to head. Sorry, shoulder to head from Francois Van Vick. And then here's the grounding. I think this is scored. Definitely saw the ball placed. Right, yeah. The try is good. We'll get the angles for the head contact. The Van Vick very upright in that tackle. It's a shoulder to the head. Tries to go over the Let's top of George top Martin, doesn't it? I don't think there's much mitigation here. Shoulder to head. He's already stood upright, so there is shoulder to head. Head contact, yes, and foul play, yes. We'll go from there. Yes, coming now. This feels Genji, like it might well, be Genji's so upright himself, isn't he? There's no dip.
He knocks him back, so it is a dominant hit. Agreed. So far. Yes. Let's have a look at mitigation. Uh, the only potential mitigation could be other tacklers changing the dynamics. But let's assess that, please. Well, there are other tacklers, but I don't think they sh they change his yeah. dynamic. He tries to go over George Martin and runs out of room, but so I don't think that's a mitigating factor. The other tacklers have no effect. It's just a no I don't see any mitigation. Uh, what number is that? Claire, what's the number? 17. Just checking, it's the guy with the camera on him now, with the cut here. 17. Uh, red card, right? 17, yes, great. Well, that's made the last 15 minutes interesting, hasn't it, just? There were one or two Leicester folk around us questioning whether Semiran Drandras ought to have been a red card in the first half on Freddie Burns. But I think we could all see the Burns dip. There was no Genge dip to save Van Fey. Absolutely, yeah, and that's the clear difference between the two. You try to change the habit of the tackler, get them to get lower, to hinge in the hips. As soon as you're bought upright, you're asking for trouble. Yes, Genji's upright, but it's the responsibility with the tackler to get lower. Van Veek starts high, stays high, it's direct to the head, it's an absolute red card. Less than 15 minutes to negotiate with 40. Be an interesting uh, substitution, Harry Thacker. We know what he brings to any game. 70 of them for Leicester before he left in 2018. Played a largely um, shadowing role behind Tom Youngs during his time at, at Welford Road. Found friends and influenced people here at Ashton Gate with the Bears. Energy levels will not noticeably decrease with him on the pitch. Line, yep. Now, all of a sudden, less than not quite... Because Bristol will need to be much better in this yellow card period, red card, sorry, than they have been previously. Bears not competing in the air, waiting instead for uh, for Wells to come back. Once. Back off blue. Overtoyed. Challenging with Stewart. Uh, Watson back. and Van Portfleet covering the backfield. Home run. Van Portfleet's kick, Watson's chase, Ibertoy's take. Genge. Heenan, oh, that's very nicely done. Randrandra beautifully away. McGinty picks out Bailey. McGinty. Martin holds on. Volumes left. Volume level significantly increasing around Ashton Gate. Dan Thomas wandered in. Just will have a look down the other side. Thacker waits underneath his um, scrum cap. Here he is. Montoya does really well there. Good clear out on him though. Takes player. his feet away. Randrandra. Who he was the option. Randrandra didn't fancy it. Up to within 10 metres. Porter. Genge. Lost forwards by Heenan. Leicester will have to bring uh, Whitcomb time back on now to replace the well. red-carded prop. Who will they time replace him with? Montoya just getting a bit of treatment. Sam, Sam Harrison um, 
on uh, James Whitcomb's left, who is um, Leicester's scrum coach. Not if it's, not if it's contested. The next England coach. I'm sure Steve Borthwick hates the speculation, but his, um, but his name has been well, inextricably linked with Eddie Jones' fortune and his future this weekend. There's also the question, the next permanent England coach, or the next temporary one, that's being touted out there as well, isn't it? RFU Summit meeting on Monday. Oh, to be a fly on the wall. Who are Leicester taking off? I think it's him, Chris Ashton. It's always the winger, Topsy, isn't it? Always the winger. Always. Oh, he's not short. Well, Leicester have got to bring somebody off, and it is Ashton. So stability, yeah. Yes, look, you are you're looking to shore up your set piece, and especially with the scrum where it is. If you're Leicester, maybe That's you're thinking, right, let's scrum, let's try and get a penalty, kick to the line out drive as well. Really it exert is, yeah, some so control. So yeah, well, yes or no, sad to me I say that, but sometimes the winger is the easy one to sacrifice. Bartley as well. You've got Stewart and Watson who've both been really good under the high ball tonight. And if Leicester are gonna start having to kick a little bit more now with less bodies on the field, you want good chasers competing on those box kicks. So we jump the gun over here and over here. Stability all the way across, please. Oh, the art of defending down to 14. One of the arts is to ask lots of questions. Crowds. Continues to tick it to Leicester Scrum. Jack Van Portfleet. Stay behind, Knight. Both feet. Well, Leicester hoping for the penalty that they get. Double bonus. And that's it. It's exactly what you'd want. Yeah, both sides go forward. Control the set piece, get a penalty, but our sort of time, I mean, if we, you could keep an eye on the clock. How long this penalty takes to get kicked out, how long the line out takes, but when you're down a man, 10 minutes left, this is how you control the game. Can't tell you how big a scrum this is, but only that big a scrum that your prop wants to kiss your hooker. When he kicks it, the time level. Leicester just uh, bringing on fresh legs, fresh lungs, fresh mind. That's uh, Eli Snayman. Snayman uh, off for Harry Wells. <laughs> Harry Wells not rowing his boat off the lake particularly rapidly either. You can't blame them. Bristol will be doing exactly the same. Absolutely. You don't like it when it's happening against you, but it is what it is. Too much pressure comes through, everyone just left. Tom Harrison with the handshake for his second row. Ten minutes to go. Seven points in it. Bristol a man up. More over. Snapped down by Hanro Liebenberg. Leicester will want to maul this, take all the time out of the clock, but also try and force a penalty. Give them field position. Bristol have defended it well. Harry Thack has got in on the ball. from Thacker, isolated the Leicester player, meant he could change his grip onto the ball. Good work, Whitcomb just a little bit upright, wrestling with Genge, doesn't realise the trouble that Leicester are in behind him. Time off then, time's off. We just had one, but if you want. We had one at the... Um, when you were sorting out who was coming off. 
We should Got probably point out for those that yeah, are worried that he might have taken a bang to the head. He often looks like he that, likes... doesn't he? <laughs> Big wide eyes. Having a laugh with Ellis Genge. Bumped into Max this morning down by the docks. He was walking his um, two little two hours. Pointing me in the direction of a cracking coffee shop. Now he's got a bit more of um, an important thing on his mind. He does, and all the while, the whole Bristol backline got together discussing. You've now got seven against six in the backline. So how do you run something that keeps that Leicester defence tight and leaves all the space out on this right-hand side, assuming the ball comes out of the scrum? Incidentally, I wonder whether Max Laheath might go the full 80 here. Kyle Sinclair missing. He'll be missing for the next three to four weeks after hurting himself against South Africa at Twickenham last weekend. Uh, Jay Tyak is the replacement tight head. Cornish man with a Cornish name. He's a big star at the Pirates, a really well-regarded player, but he doesn't have a great deal of Premiership experience. Joined yeah. Bristol this season after a trial, so I don't know whether it's in the mind, perhaps, of um, Pat Lamb, John Muldoon, the forwards coach, um, to, um, to keep him in his warm quilted jacket, or maybe not. This might be the time that we um, we see Jay Tyak. What a time to come on. The clock keeps ticking. I mean, it's a long way off from the end of the game, isn't it? But it's all helping Leicester at the moment. Is this one of those situations where you'd almost just free kick? Well, they're, they're talking, aren't they, of bringing in uh, a shot clock. clock. Yeah. yeah, shot clock. Scrum has to be completed in a certain time. Boy. Absolutely, we should be doing that, 100%. I don't want the clock really stopped because the games will just go on forever and that almost encourages them to take even longer. Well, Leicester getting a decent shove on there, but it's going to have to be reset. And that'll be at least another 30 seconds. Uh, Mike Hudson, the assistant on the far side, saying that he needs... Craig Maxwell keys just to come along and see what's happening where he is. I don't mind that we have resets because it's going to happen when no one's really at fault. But it's the time to set up. As soon as that whistle goes for a reset, get back on your feet, lads, get off. They've got to be hounding these front rows because this is the most important part of front row's job. So they're going to take as long as they can to get set up, get everything ideal, get their breath back. That man in the middle has to be hounding them to get set quicker. Jay Tyak on. Right, time on. Same positive pitch here. Let's go to the same, same time side, let's go. Come on, Jimmy. Come on, Jimmy. Easy. Come on, Jimmy. Let's go, Jimmy. Let's go, Jimmy. And he'll be um, pushing against James Whitcomb, who was replaced, but he's back with us because he had to replace Francois Van Fake, who was red carded. If you've recently joined us. So Leicester playing with 14. They've sacrificed Chris Ashton. About another 40 seconds gone since the substitution was made there. Will Porter, finally people around us in the in the Lansdowne stand say. <laughs> Randrandra. Ooh, and on the uh, stretch was Genge and Heenan. Batley. That man hasn't made many replacements, largely sticking with those who've been on the pitch from the start, including O'Connor and Piatau. And Bailey, he stopped just outside the 22. Leicester's 14 man defence. George Martin was the first out of it. Bristol have another little look, and the uh, Ibatoy. Luatua. Batley, oh, that's gone loose. But Genge got there first, and he will fancy running it in all on his own. And he's, oh, he's splattered Potter. And this is Thacker, and this is Ibatoy, and this is the chance. He's got it. And he goes and scores. What 
what a finish. Absolutely outstanding. I think Ibertoy has been really good all game. He's looked the liveliest attacker for Bristol, carrying from deep. What a carry from that man. You said it. How Potter's jumped back to his feet after this, I don't know. That is sensational. Gets his head on the wrong side. He's hurt himself, Genge, but when you need a spark from a big player, Ellis Genge more often than not can pick one up. And then Harry Thacker's timing the pass perfect. Ibertoy nearly loses his way following AJ McGinty through that channel, but thankfully for him, no Leicester players taken out, and that's a really good finish. Genge has um, gone off. Jake Woolmore has come on. AJ McGinty to drawers level. Bristol 26, Leicester 26. Crackers. Incredible stuff. He took some pain for that carry, but the biggest thing, as Benny said, not after the bug, he then kept the ball alive, which meant the move was still alive, exploiting the space down the short side. And if it's Ayer, who's been busy, he's got off his wing, he's offered himself. Good reward for a really industrious night's work, and the kickoff's not got 10 now. All the momentum with Bristol going into this last three minutes. Control. If you're Freddie Burns and you're the team, why are you not kicking that longer to take some pressure off you to give you some breath? Oh, the run from, from Genge and then from Thacko and then from Ibertoy. Shoving McGinty out of the way. He's trying to go under the post to make the kick easier for him. Now, defending a centre field scrum is hard enough. You know, we saw that on Friday night with the Harlequins of Bath game. But when you've got a man down, so much space to cover. Well, Bristol have got their two ace cards Charles Piatau and Semi Randrandra and Ibertoy, all banked away to the left hand side. Van Portfleet is covering that side, you can see him. It's another scrum. Lieberberg can't believe that wasn't given. No movement this side. Clear so roll underneath on the right hand side, opposite side from the referee, to be fair. Bristol get the benefit of the doubt, they'll get another go at it. They might not want to leave the ball in quite as long this time. Might see it in and out a little bit quicker. Haven't mentioned it by the way, but um, just for the record, just for the uh, for the accounts, a, a bonus point try for Bristol. So um, at the moment they're banking three points from this contest, less than two. There they are. A threat, a threat, a threat. Crabs. Boings. 90 seconds to go. Potter and Porter will hope Van Poorfleet can get off this pretty quickly. Free kick. Going to take the scrum again to keep those bodies in the Leicester scrum. Scrum again. Which will then mean, ideally, Piertau needs to be nice and flat on the ball to negate the width. Van Borvliet needs to get to first defender to negate that overlap. If he doesn't, you give those three Bristol players one-on-one -on -one attacking opportunities, which are lethal at. The problem is, when they nearly got the scrum, Leicester, Whitcomb really went for Tiak. But if he does that too much, he takes his back row away, and if... Bristol still get it out. Leicester's back row can't go and support on the inside of Van Poorfleet. And they go the way of the threats, of course they do. Randrandra, fed by Piertau. Van Poorfleet had a tentative little fish over the top. 30 seconds to go. Bristol going for glory. One offside. Vantage. Oh, it's a Bristol penalty. Leicester offside, it will be a hefty one from McGinty. But they have this in the bank. Still playing this. Taken on by Randrandra. 
We're going to have the most spectacular of finishes here either way. Understood. That's a good picture. Offside. Back we come. Where? Here. And the final act of the Gallagher Premiership before we uh, all take a fortnight's break for Europe will be this dramatic It's Whitcomb, isn't it? Penalty. Just starts to step and doesn't go back. Not really involved, but just slightly lazy on that retreat, and it gifts this opportunity. It's the AR's call, and he set the 10 metre line. That can go, please. Uh, sorry. If this goes over, I'm not going to be saying much for a while because it's going to be pandemonium. AJ McGinty for the win and for the weekend. It's not the win. It's a draw. And in the end, that feels about right. Both sides have contributed magnificently to this contest. And as, as much as we all love Europe, as much as we all love the Champions Cup, we all love the Challenge Cup, we're going to miss the Premiership over the next fortnight. Come back soon. Final score at Ashton Gate. Bristol 26, Leicester 26. Well, that's a really good comeback from Bristol. They did all the work but couldn't quite get that final penalty at the end. But... What a comeback and looking of the various candidates for player of the match. I thought Dan Kelly on his return was fantastic for Leicester. Visa as well was really, really good. It's great to see Semi Randrandra back, but for me, the guy that was the most potent threat, and I thought he was a great signing for Bristol, and he could well prove to be that with performances like tonight, is Gabriel Libertoy. He's our Gallagher Premiership Man of the Match.